Part three of our investigation into the Gunner Mercenary Faction brings us to Hub City Auto Wreckers, east of Saugus Ironworks and north of Finch Farm. This is a pre-war auto wrecking yard recently taken over by the Gunners. This wrecking yard is extremely well defended. Even at lower levels, the enemy gunners here wield very high level weapons. The gunners have erected barricades and walls around the perimeter of the wrecking yard, giving us only two ways of entry. The southern entry goes through a wrecked train and over a laser tripwire attached to a missile launcher trap. The second entrance is on the north side and this just goes through a highly defended opening in the wall. The warehouse on the northern side does not have any openings, but there is a small warehouse inside the auto wrecking yard which is attached to a trailer. There are many ramps atop most of the wrecked cars. They almost all have gunners patrolling them. And in the very middle of the yard, we find an elevated wrecked trailer. Inside is a terminal connected to a piece of heavy machinery that lowers and lifts a bridge that leads to the nearby wrecked overpass. There are three main structures of the overpass. The first building is guarded by one gunner. This has a terminal that also operates the crane. The southern building is occupied by a gunner with a missile launcher. And the northern building, which consists of a big broken truck and a tiny shack, is guarded by the leader of this outfit, Captain Bridget. Captain Bridget wields a fat man, and it's here that we find a terminal that has much of the story telling us why the gunners are here to begin with. Off in the distance, we can see Saugus Ironworks, the Revere Satellite Array, and Finch Farm, which includes part of the broken overpass. Now, the story aside for a moment, this was an extremely annoying video to shoot. Hub City Auto Wreckers lies right in the path of a lot of walking caravans. It's also smack dab between two different military checkpoints and it's within firing range of Finch Farm and the Saugus Ironworks. The gunners here are extremely aggressive, which means that from my experience, these guys are almost always in the middle of a firefight when you happen upon the Hub City Auto Wreckers. Now, I originally tried to show you a back way to sneak into this camp. At the northern side of the yard, you can hop up a dirt pile to walk along a cinder block retaining wall that goes around the back of the camp. My idea was to snipe many of the gunners from a safe distance away. However, the gunners thought of this because there are landmines on the cinder blocks. What? Did you see that? Was that invisible? There's another invisible landmine just a little bit away. I couldn't see the landmine either of these two times. What the heck, Gunners? Now there's a military checkpoint along the road near Finch Farm. Even though I'm all the way over here at the Hub City Auto Wreckers, for some reason, I got a notification that the military checkpoint was under attack. And it just so happened to be under attack from a Brotherhood of Steel Vertibird. The annoying thing is that the Vertibird zoned in on my location and flew right to me. But Gunners hate the Brotherhood of Steel too. So I got stuck in a firefight with gunners trying to attack me and the Brotherhood, the Brotherhood trying to attack me and the gunners completely blowing my stealth operation. Really annoying. So I loaded a previous save and first ran south to the military checkpoint to take care of the Brotherhood of Steel Vertibird first. Finally, after the Vertibird was done, I headed north back towards the Hub City Auto Wreckers, only to get another notification that another military checkpoint was under attack, this time by the Slog. So to prevent the same thing from happening again, I raced towards the Slog, only to find another Brotherhood of Steel Vertibird attacking since at this checkpoint. With that one down and out of the way, I went back to Hub City Auto Wreckers, only to find a third Vertibird attacking the Gunners at Hub City Auto Wreckers. Welcome to my personal vertebrate nightmare hell. All I want to do is shoot footage about this place and the Brotherhood of Steel won't leave me alone. The gunners managed to take care of it for me, so all I had to do is stand back and watch it crash. Finally, with this third vertebrate out of the way, I could go back to sneaking into the Hub City Auto Wreckers. Now the gunners here, as I said previously, are extremely aggressive towards absolutely everything, including Brahmin. There's a small cluster of four or five Brahmin that like to hang out just north of Finch Farm. 
They're there in every game that I've played and they don't really move from this location. It just so happens to be within line of sight of the overpass attached to Hub City Auto Wreckers. The gunners on this overpass really like to shoot missiles at the Brahmin hanging out on this patch of land. They will just sit there and shoot their guns and their missiles at these Brahmin until they're all dead. The problem is that Brahmin like to run, of course, because they don't want to die, but the gunners are stupid enough to chase the Brahmin. Instead of staying in the safety of their overpass, they hop on down and chase the Brahmin. So this didn't really help my sneaky attack plan very much because here I am walking along the cinder block retaining wall trying to find a crack where I can snipe some of these gunners, only to turn around and see that the gunners are right behind me. They ran off on a wild Brahmin chase, and as they walked back, they walked right past where I was trying to sneak in. So I ended up killing half of the gunners outside the walls of Hub City Auto Wreckers. Once dead, I said, forget this, I'm just gonna go in through one of the main entrances. So I went around the camp to the broken subway car. I tried to sneak in, but there's a gunner assaultron on patrol, which is really fast, and it managed to find me. So I ended up killing it outside the camp. Contact reacquired. Now, I was originally going to do this video on my stealthy railroad character, but that character is only level 17. There's no way she could have survived this particular camp. But stealthing on my giant power armor clad commando spec institute character is not working. <laughs> I, this character cannot stealth for the life of her. So once the machine gun turret in the middle of the camp saw me, I said, forget stealth, and I just ran in guns blazing. <laughs> Using my jetpack, I jumped up on top of the shipping containers to take care of one of the gunners patrolling the catwalks. You can then take the ramp inside the busted out trailer. It's here that we find the terminal that controls the crane. The terminal still has a few pre-war entries. One is called the Picking Yard Manifest and it's in that entry that we learned some of the pre-war vehicles that were scrapped here, but it gets garbled. And the reason it gets garbled is because the gunners hacked into this terminal. The terminal says, unknown hardware detected, Corvega multi-purpose utility of vehicle. Please contact retailer for device drivers. And that's because the gunners hacked into this terminal to use it to control the crane. Clicking on crane control allows you to lower or raise the ramp. You can then look out the window to watch the ramp lower, giving you access to the overpass. <laughs> Having abandoned stealth for good, I then ran out of the trailer across the bridge and into the first hut manned by a gunner. But the gunner with the missile launcher is directly south of me and has seen me. Turning south and running as fast as we can, we can dodge a few missiles just in time to pump this gunner full of lead. This makes Captain Bridget the only gunner left remaining. However, she has a fat man, which means that if we want to avoid a nuclear death, we must kill her as soon as possible. I don't understand how she survived nuking herself. She threw a mini nuke right into this shipping container and she didn't die. I don't get it, at least she's dead. Now that the gunners are dead, we can loot corpses and explore the rest of this camp. There's a terminal on a desk right next to where Captain Bridget was that you can only access if you were outside of power armor. And in here, we learn a little bit more about what the gunners are doing here. There are three terminal entries. The first is called the cannery. The primary reason that the gunners are here at the Hub City Auto Wreckers is to use it as a post for scouting nearby locations. Just like the gunners in Gunners Plaza, the gunners here at Hub City Auto Wreckers like espionage. These gunners dressed up like traders and went to the nearby cannery. This is Long Neck Lakowski's cannery, just south of the Kingsport Lighthouse. Inside, they found a guy with a couple of robots. They're thinking about taking it over, and they think they can take it over with minimal resistance. They just don't know if they have a gunner on staff with the technical chops necessary to make use of the robots inside the cannery. Interestingly, she ends by saying, I've sent word along to the LT, and he can decide. 
LT. I guess that's short for Lieutenant. The only Lieutenant I know of is Lieutenant Ryan, who came up with the idea that Captain Wes used to infiltrate the Raiders at Hyde Park. But we never actually meet Lieutenant Ryan in the game. It's likely that this Lieutenant Ryan is the mastermind behind some of the strategic decisions that the Gunners are making here in the Commonwealth. A problem with this theory is that Lieutenant is traditionally an inferior rank compared to Captain. I took a look at modern United States Army and Navy ranks and Lieutenant Lieutenant was towards the bottom of the command chain and Captain was a little bit higher. So I'm not sure why Captain Bridget would be reporting to a Lieutenant Ryan. Another explanation is that LT stands for landing team. Maybe Bridget was going to be giving this information to any landing team that they sent to the cannery. Reading this note adds the Long Neck Lakowski cannery to your Pip-Boy map. The next note is called the quarry. Reading this note adds the Dunwich Borers to your map. Gunner Intel has correctly identified that Raiders inhabit the Dunwich Borers. They also correctly link the Raiders at Dunwich Borers to the Raiders at Saugus Ironworks. Remember when I did my video on the Dunwich Borers, we learned that Slag at the Saugus Ironworks had sent Raiders to Dunwich Borers to mine for ore, which they were using to manufacture their own weapons. When the Raiders that he originally sent got scared and didn't want to go deeper into the quarry, he sent a second group of Raiders to finish the job. The Gunners here at Hub City Auto Records have made the connection between Slag at the Saga Ironworks and the Dunwich Boars, but they also noticed something strange. Bridget says, Some of the reports I've received have mentioned that they are acting a bit strangely. She may be referring to Hugo. Remember in my video on Dunwich Boars, we learned of a raider named Hugo who made a little home for himself called Hugo's Hole. Whatever supernatural event was going on at the Dunwich Boars had kind of driven him a little crazy. Bridget and these gunners noticed it, and they decided to do a little bit more recon before taking over Dunwich Boars. The third note is labeled Revere. Reading this note adds the Revere Beach station icon to your Pip-Boy. The report says that they've discovered large groups of raiders at the Revere Boardwalk. They're also interested in the nearby subway, marina, and satellite array, which is inhabited by super mutants. They admit that the raiders there at the boardwalk are large enough to pose a threat, but Bridget thinks that the bridge separating them is enough to to keep the raiders at bay for now. Instead of attacking, the gunners will continue to send out scouting sorties. So what do we learn from this terminal? Well, we learned that the gunners are actively trying to take over the Commonwealth. They spread like viruses. They take a point of strategic importance, like the Hub City Auto Wreckers, and then use it as a base from which to launch campaigns to take over other points. What are their motives? Well, their motives are technology and to reduce threat. In the Long Neck Lakowski entry, they learn about robots that may be useful to them. They just need to get someone on board who has the technical capacity to reprogram the robots. And they're primarily concerned with the boardwalk area of Revere because the number of raiders living there pose a threat to to gunner operations. And we also see a distinct chain of command. Instead of a raider boss that sits on his raider throne, each of these gunner locations has an officer, Captain Wes at Gunners Plaza, Captain Bridget here at Hub City Auto Wreckers, and they report directly to their superior officers. In this case, I think it's probably Lieutenant Ryan. They have a structure in place that can better scout for scavenging opportunities and retrieve resources that are then distributed to other gunners as necessary to make the gunner faction as a whole stronger. This lays the foundation for a mercenary faction that can grow to become very large. Raiders are ultimately small. Raiders fight raiders. Each little raider gang fights other rival raider gangs. They use brutality and fear to create loyalty amongst their ranks, but the gunners, I think, are a little bit more level-headed. They depend upon materialism, gaining more wealth, and they appeal to the concepts of courage and duty, while not being afraid to shame those who don't live up to those character traits. But I don't want to seal my own thunder. I am racking up a whole bunch of information that I am saving for a big video on the Gunners. So be sure to subscribe so that you get notified when I publish that video. I recently launched a shirt shop, ladies and gentlemen. Many of the t-shirts are Fallout 4 and Oxhorn themed, so if you'd like to snag an Oxhorn t-shirt, be sure to click on my Teespring t-shirt shop link in the description of this video. I read all of the comments you guys leave on my videos, so if you have any ideas for future content, if you have any questions about Gunner 
listener lore and you want to make sure that I talk about a specific topic, or if you have any t-shirt ideas that you'd like to see me create, let me know in the comment section below. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers get access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so glad that you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with a brand new video.